This is ABC. Hey, man, what do you want to do? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe finish high school. In college. Wife. House. Kids. Bowl on Wednesdays. Work off the old gut. Make middle management. I hang it up and head on down to Miami. Buy some white shoes and pants to come up to my chest and complain about the government full time. No, man. I mean, what do you want to do this afternoon? Oh. The beach. I love it! <laughs> During the Dodge President's Week sale, we'll do anything it takes. Starting with $500 cash back on Shadow ES. No $750. Okay, $1,000. Anything it takes. A loaded six passenger spirit would be a great deal at $15,000. How would you like it under twelve dollars Plus immediate delivery, on the spot financing, low down payment. Anything, anything, anything. At the Dodge President's Week sale. Wide 85 and Contact Voyage Travel present an all Beatles weekend. Listen to one-out trip for two to London, England, starting this Friday at 3. Still busy, huh? Uh, yeah. I'm sure she'll remember to let the dog in. Maybe, but I'll try again. Come on, the movie's starting. Oh, honey, you think she'll remember? She's gotten a lot more responsible. Right, she'd never leave. No, nah, she'd never leave the dog out tonight. Come on. Okay. Why be frustrated by a busy signal or miss an important call? With South Central Bell's call waiting, every call gets through, so no one gets left out in the cold. South Central Bell makes your life a touch easier. Call on us, order now, and save $8. This man ordered bargain pizza for his family, and sure enough, he got skimped. Avoid skimpy toppings by insisting on Pizza Hut pizza loaded with toppings. Don't get skimped. Get to Pizza Hut while a medium specialty pizza or any medium up to three toppings is just $9.99. Then add a second medium for just $4.99. So don't get skimped. Don't get skimped at lunch either. Try the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet only $3.99 weekdays at Pizza Hut. Night Court, weeknights at 1035 on Channel 6. From Channel 6, your 24-hour news source, this is Channel 6 News at 10. In order to accomplish both increased investment and deficit reduction, something no American government has ever been called upon to do at the same time before, spending must be cut and taxes must be raised. President Clinton asked for sacrifice, and tonight he reveals the sacrifices he wants Alabamians and all Americans to make. Good evening, I'm Brenda Ledun. And I'm Scott Richards. Thanks for joining us tonight. The president said it clearly. His plan raises taxes and slashes government spending. The plan he outlined tonight is also loaded with spending, spending in investments, he said, instead of for consumption. Mr. Clinton wants to invest $30 billion in creating about half a million new jobs. That plan includes tax incentives for small businesses and entrepreneurs. The president also proposed an increase in the top tax rate from 31 percent to 36 percent for the wealthiest Americans, those families earning more than 180000 a year, and for corporations. He also proposed a 10 percent surtax on families making more than $250,000 a year. And he proposed a BTU, or energy tax, applying to all forms of energy. The president also asked Congress to police itself with campaign finance laws, lobbying laws. And he called for a one-year freeze on federal government salaries and smaller raises after the one year. The president also emphasized health care reform. He promised a plan on reform and made it clear just how important he thinks health care reform is. Let me say this again. I feel so strongly about this. All of our efforts to strengthen the economy will fail unless we also take this year, not next year, not five years from now, but this year, bold steps to reform our health care system. And again, the president was careful to say that everyone will share in the sacrifices he's asking for. And what exactly does the president's plan mean to us here in Alabama? Victoria McCullough has reaction tonight from our state party leaders. Victoria, what are they saying about the president's proposals tonight? Well, let's start first with the Alabama Democrats. A group met tonight downtown at state party headquarters to watch the president's State of the Union address. They applauded and gave at least as many standing ovations as did the audience in Washington, D.C.
These Democrats admit some of the sacrifices will be difficult, but the, state's part, the state party's state executive director says Alabama won't take on any more of the burden than any other state. Uh, so it, it's all going to balance out. Each state will take a little hit on something, but overall it, it's going to work out for the benefit of everybody, not just all of us here, but our kids down the road. They won't have to pay for this huge deficit, and that's the decision we got to make. Alabama's Republican Party is quick, taking an early stand against the president's plans to raise taxes. State Party Chairman, Chairman Albert Peters says the president needs to slash more spending before he comes to Alabamians and asks for more money. The GOP is talking tonight about broken campaign promises. Uh, people from Arkansas tried to tell us that he was very slick. He didn't have any qualms about saying one thing today and saying something else tomorrow. And we're seeing that. So Slick Willie is living up to his reputation. And what we're hearing tonight is just the tip of the iceberg. There's still lots more discussion to come on the pros and cons of the president's plan and exactly what it will mean to Alabama. All right, thank you very much, Victoria. And she's absolutely right. The debates have just begun, and not just in political circles. Alabama taxpayers also tuned in to the president's State of the Union address, and of course, they differed on what they thought of the president's plan. Just listen to two of the reactions tonight on Southside. I understand his position on not wanting to raise taxes, but he had to do what he had to do. He's he not going to only raise the, the rich person tax, which is the white collar. The low income, know what he's going to do? What he's going to do? He's going to take out their pocket. And Alabamians certainly aren't shy when it comes to telling their congressmen what they think. After Monday night's presidential address, Senator Shelby's office took in more than 100 calls on Tuesday. And naturally, aides are bracing for many more calls tomorrow. Tonight, Shelby and Senator Hal Heflin tell us their initial impressions of the president's plan. I think overall it was a good speech. I didn't agree with everything, but I would say that it, I would agree with 95% of what he said. I hope that this works, but I have a feeling that we've been there before and the government will continue to grow and taxes will continue to grow. The president hits the road tomorrow to try to drum up support for his plan. First stop, St. Louis. Join us tomorrow at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock when Terry Denard will travel to St. Louis to talk with the president. Also happening tonight, two people are dead after a house fire. Now, it happened about 30 minutes ago on 4th Street North in Graymont. We don't know yet what exactly caused that fire. The victims' names haven't yet been released. And right now, let's go to James Spann for a first look at our weather. James? Well, brisk, a kind way to put it, Brenda. It's cold out there. The air flowing into Alabama coming off the snow fields of the Midwest. At 10 o'clock, temperatures very close to the freezing mark over much of north and central Alabama. We're expecting the readings to drop about five more degrees, so you should wind up in the mid to upper 20s early in the morning. Here's our forecast for the rest of tonight. Variably cloudy with cold temperatures. Wind out of the north at 5 to 10. We'll forecast a low tonight in the mid-20s, right around 25 degrees. And the wind is still blowing, so wind chill values tonight have been in the teens all night long. So we'll talk about this winter chill coming up later in weather. Well, it might be cold outside tonight, but I hear the Lady Tigers were pretty hot, huh? Yeah, they are. They're ranked six in the nation. They're now 22 and one, and they had a big, uh, I guess, a brag and right special tonight against Alabama. And Auburn's bragging tonight. Lady Tigers and Joe Champy's crew, 93 to 67 over Alabama tonight down at Auburn. Loretta Freeman, a career night. 30 points, 21 rebounds for that lone player. We got the highlights and postgame comments coming up. Also in men's play tonight, Alabama Crimson Tide, they lose to the Bulldogs. The Auburn Tigers beat the Bulldogs in the same night. I'll explain how that happened later on in sports. Billy Ray Cyrus remembers his childhood. That's coming up. And is there really a way to visit the town of Mayberry? Well, sort of. A return to Mayberry is next. You're watching Channel 6 News, your 24-hour news source with Scott Richards, Brenda Ladon, meteorologist James Spann with the Doppler 6 forecast, and Rick Carley with sports. This is Channel 6 News at 10. You know, this is definitely us. Mm -hmm. This is us. We've got to get it. We have worked hard, and we deserve a nice luxury car. I'm going to leave you to yourselves. Just let me know if you have any questions. I'll be right over here. Okay. Tony, 
If we're gonna do this, we need to go ahead and do it now. Now lease a sedan to Ville for as little as $10,776 in total monthly payments. A small price to pay for so much luxury. I think it would make a nice addition to our garage. Elegance, elegance. What is the main difference between these two vehicles? I thought the S10 was a lot more comfortable than the Ranger was. I like the controls in the S10 a lot better. The Ranger still looks old-fashioned to me. Obviously, the S10 has more headroom than the Ranger. I think the S10 is a better buy than the Ranger. Shop and compare, and you'll find that Chevrolet is building America's most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. And right now, you can save up to $2,745 on Chevy's S10 pickup, only from your Heart of Alabama Chevy dealers. The S10 is just more solidly built. Tomorrow on Daybreak, a judge decides where Star Trek's profits will go. Plus, Mr. Food shows us a shortcut to stroganoff. Join us tomorrow from 6 to 7 for Daybreak. Just how far will the Girls of Music videos go for fame? Plus, what the Oscar nominees think of their chances on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 11.05 on Channel 6. February is National Cash Month. That's right, John Front Monster will match all factory rebates to double your savings. Savings up to $4,000. Only at John Crump Mazda in Jasper. Why get a home equity loan from First Alabama Bank? First Alabama Bank. If you want to see more features, turn to a movie channel. See the ES300 at Tom Williams Lexus in Birmingham. You'll like the price of admission. Mayberry, North Carolina is without a doubt one of the best known towns in America. But you won't, have to, you won't find it on a map anywhere. Andy Griffith says Mayberry is only a state of mind. But that doesn't stop folks from trying to find Mayberry and their search takes them to Andy Griffith's hometown, Mount Airy, North Carolina. As Michael Jones found out, you don't have to stay too long in Mount Airy to believe you've returned to Mayberry. A visit to Mount Airy, North Carolina is about as close to visiting Mayberry as you can get. It's a beautiful town, Andy. Uh, we like it. <laughs> In fact, the line between the real Mount Airy and the fictional Mayberry seems to blur just a bit. Andy Griffith grew up in this house on Haymore Street, and the folks of Mount Airy say a lot of his childhood memories found their way onto the Andy Griffith Show. Everybody's like Andy's boyhood friend, Emmett Forrest. Emmett, uh, as in Emmett's Fix-It Shop. Did he pull that name from you, do you think? Well, you have to think so, because uh, they're, you know, that's an unusual name, yeah. first of all. And remember Mount Pilot? That's where Andy and Barney go on Saturday night. Well, just down the road from Mount Airy, you'll find the town of Pilot Mountain. Then there's the Snappy Lunch. Although you never see Andy going to the Snappy Lunch on the show, he does mention it a couple of times. He ate in here in the school days with all the rest of the children. It was just one block from here in sight. They all came here. I just appreciate the fact that he remembered <laughs> the Snappy Lunch. And the folks next door at the barber shop, Floyd's City Barber Shop, believe he remembered it on his show too. We feel like it. Uh, this had something to do with Floyd's Barbershop on the show. Maybe it was a prototype of Floyd's Barbershop. So the Arts Council insisted I add Floyd's to it because it was Floyd's. The walls in the barbershop are covered with pictures of people who come to see Floyd. They come in called Drew and I both Floyd, and, and this is Floyd's Barbershop all over America. All over Mount Airy, you'll find little bits of Mayberry, from replicas of Andy's squad car and Emmett's pickup truck, to the Aunt B room at the Mayberry Motor Inn. It's furnished with bedroom furniture that belonged to the late Francis Bavier. Sarah, hold my calls, will you? Thanks a lot. Does this look familiar? Well, if you're a fan of the Andy Griffith Show, it should. This is a replica of the Mayberry Jail and Courthouse. You can check out the wanted posters on the wall to see which dangerous criminals are on the loose. In case trouble breaks out, there's a bullet right here on the counter. And if you get hungry, Aunt B was kind enough to pack one of her delicious lunches complete with a jar of her kerosene cucumbers.
Uh, Mount Airy is not Mayberry, we know that, but there's a lot of Mayberry and a lot of Mount Airy in Mayberry, and it's exciting, it's fun. And while they can't actually return to Mayberry, fans of the Andy Griffith Show can return to Mount Airy again and again. Well, the best to you, and if you ever buy this way again, be sure and stop by. In Mount Airy, North Carolina, Michael Jones, Channel 6 News at 10. And as we mentioned, you can't find Mayberry on a map, but you can find Mount Airy. It's about 80 miles north of Charlotte, North Carolina, just off Interstate 77. You can drive from Birmingham to Mount Airy in about eight hours. Now, September is a very good time to visit Mount Airy, by the way. That's when it holds its Mayberry Days Festival. <laughs> well, you may have just seen the Billy Ray Cyrus special, Dreams Come True. How did his dreams begin? They began in this little town called Flatwoods in the hills of eastern Kentucky. Cyrus's family and friends still live in Flatwoods, where a sign at a car dealership commemorates the singer's hometown. Cyrus says music has always been a part of his life. I always loved music. I was raised, uh, my papa was a Pentecostal preacher, and I was raised in a Pentecostal church, and my dad had a gospel quartet. My mom and my other papa had a bluegrass band, and he, that papa played the fiddle, and my mom played the piano, and I was just always raised around a lot of music, and uh, I've always loved music. Cyrus will be in Birmingham May 27th. By the way, race car driver Clifford Allison's widow gave us a call tonight. She wanted to tell us how supportive Cyrus has been of her and her children since Clifford Allison's death. Achy Breaky Heart was Clifford Allison's favorite song, so Cyrus dedicates the song to Allison in concert. Lisa Allison says uh, Cyrus also calls and writes her children frequently. And I like him even more now. Yeah. Well, why would koalas go cross-country? That's coming up. And is it going to get colder? James Van's Doppler 6 forecast is next on Channel 6 News, your 24-hour news source. Son, are you ready for the great Skinnerini? You saw the man in half trick? Daddy, I mean Skinnerini. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Son, if I can cut the prices on all fours way below invoice, I can sure cut you in half. You mean like a new 93 T-Bird LX loaded with automatic and air and much more price way below invoice. That's a Jim Skinner Ford where $100 says we'll beat your best deal regardless. Daddy, I feel a little funny. Here, quick, son, pull yourself together before Mama comes home and catches us. Do you need a sofa today but don't have the money? Buy at Sofa World with nothing down, 12 months interest-free, and no payment till March. Choose from hundreds of sofas, recliners, tables, and lamps. And remember, that's nothing down, no payment till March, and no interest for 12 months. At Sofa World, not one price is raised for special events. We never have, we never will. And that's my promise to you. The greatest values on earth, Sofa World. February is National Cash Month. That's right, John Crump Monster will match all factory rebates to double your savings. Savings up to $4,000. Only at John Crump Monster and Jasper. I guess I was the first one in the area to buy a, a new Saturn. In fact, I loved it so much and bragged about it so much that uh, my brother-in-law, Vincent, he bought one. And then my brother, Pete, he bought one. Pete's son, Michael, he got one too. And my daughter down in North Carolina, she bought one. My barber, Joe, he's got one too. You notice he don't have a picture of mine because mine's nicer. You bought the identical car, the same color guy. and everything. <laughs> The Alabama Jubilee Pro Rodeo stampedes back to Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center all this weekend featuring the thrilling Wrangler Pro Bull Fight, a wild, dangerous contest of man against beast. You'll see bronc riding, barrel racing, pro rodeos, funniest clowns, and so much more. America's most colorful production of competitive sport and Western entertainment on the road today. The Alabama Jubilee Rodeo all this weekend at Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center. The greatest show on dirt. Don't miss it. Mazda is on the move with terrific values like the all-new 93 Mazda 626 sedan. The Mazda 626 has more interior room and a better basic warranty than Accord or Altima. And Motor Trend called it bold, elegant, and European. Right now you can lease a Mazda 626DX for only $199 per month. So see us now, because Mazda's on the move.
I guess we have to admit it. We've been spoiled this winter. The temperatures have been so mild that it now feels so cold. Yeah, I walked outside and I thought it was like 10 below zero, and it's only 32 now down at the airport. But, wind uh, is blowing so hard. Yeah, wind chill value is very cold as well. Not exactly a good night to wear one of these, but I got to hold up a t shirt anyway. I slipped away between our uh, 6 and 10 o'clock news and spoke to the youth at Shades Mountain Baptist Church. There's student ministries there. That is a huge church and had a great time in a big crowd. And it was nice and warm and toasty in there. And uh, this is a nice night to be inside in a warm place because temperatures will be uh, cold tonight, even colder tomorrow night. Check out the numbers here. Now, these are the observations here at our Doppler 6 Weather Center on Red Mountain. Our thermometer is showing 30 degrees. And skip down to the bottom number. The wind chill index right now is 15. That's the way it feels with that north wind at 9 miles per hour. Relative humidity now at 78% and the barometer steady at 30.26. Arctic air settling in across about the eastern half of the country. These are 10 o'clock observations. 32 at the Birmingham airport. Again, we have 30 on the mountain. Look up north, zero now at Kansas City. Indianapolis with three...